What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm John the Video Guy and in today's short video tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a glitch effect inside Premiere Pro. Very easy and simple to do so hopefully this tutorial will help you. Let's dive in. Alright so I'm inside Premiere Pro and the first step is to go into the graphics panel, grab the text tool and type out your glitch text. So I'm just going to type out the word glitch and I'm going to change it to a thicker font such as Avenir Next heavy but you can use whatever font you'd like make it bigger and align it to the center of the screen using the align and transform panel all right once you got your text here we'll go back to the editing pane so click on editing and the next part we're going to make an adjustment layer and start animating our glitch effect so click ok drag out your adjustment layer if you hold down shift and hit the arrow, it, the time, the playhead will move forward tens, five seconds for each click. So I just went forward 10 seconds and I'll just make a cut using my razor blade tool and delete the rest of the adjustment layer. I'm zooming in here and that way we only have about 10 frames here of the glitch effect coming on. So we're going to add effects to this adjustment layer. So we'll click on our arrow, go to effects. If you can't see this window, go to window effects. And the first effect we're going to search for is called mosaic under video effects stylize and drag that onto your adjustment layer. And what you'll notice is that it adds a mosaic pattern to everything. Um, so that we can focus, I'm going to hide layer one. That way we're only seeing the, the glitch text layer. Going back to the adjustment layer, we'll make a few adjustments. We'll change the horizontal blocks to 100. And the key is going to be keyframing the vertical blocks over time. So what we're going to do is click on the stopwatch to make a keyframe. And we're going to start with small values. As you can see, as we increase these increments a little bit, there's a different glitch or kind of like mosaic pattern that occurs. So we'll start at 3. And we'll click off and click forward one frame using the arrow key on your keyboard. And we'll change it to maybe five. And we'll click off, click uh, on the arrow key again, and we'll ch keep changing it a little bit over time. And just keep doing this until you have all the frames kind of accounted for. And depending on your text, this might look different on your end. So really just choose a frame that looks good for you. If you just keep changing it here, you'll get different um, looks depending on what you have. All right, so this is what I got so far. That's looking good. The next thing we'll do is keyframe a mask, basically. And this will sell the effect that the glitch is happening in different parts of the text layer. So if we click on the rectangle mask, a, a mask will be created and we'll drag these corner elements out that way we get a nice shape that we can draw around the text layer and under the mask options we'll click on the stopwatch we'll start with it like this so the whole mask is over everything and then if we go forward in time we'll click on the mask and realign it so only maybe half of it is actually covered and we'll go forward one keyframe click on it and the same and so forth and as you go forward in time do less and less of the actual text layer being uh, covered by this path and go down in the corner That way it kind of looks randomized. Different parts are glitching at different points in time. In the last frame, I'll land on the G there. All right, so this is what we have going on now. Not bad. The next thing we'll do is add a color effect, kind of like a color strobe effect. So we'll go back to our project panel and we'll drag out another adjustment layer. And we'll grab our razor tool, make a cut, make it 10 frames the same. So I just deleted the excess adjustment layer and a cool effect that I found that can easily control color values is called color balance. And we'll drag this out. 
onto the new adjustment layer. And what we'll do is keyframe the red, green, and blue values. And over time we can change these and it basically increases and decreases the intensity of each color value. So if we go forward in time, say we'll increase the red and we'll make keyframes here. We'll just go frame by frame. You can see if it goes down to zero, then it's uh, basically black. But this gives a nice randomized type of look to our glitch effect. If we play this black back, this is what we have. There we go. And trust me, if you do that a few times, you can create some really different looks by just adjusting these randomized keyframes. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add the actual transition. And what I'm actually used for this is the transition effect called iris. Cross, which is not typically an effect I would, or a transition I would use, since it is pretty cheesy. If we click on the actual effect, we can see it here. And what we'll do is change the end to about 30 because really the text layer is only um, you know, so tall here. So you can see here on the left, that's actually the end part of it. So yeah. And we'll make this just a little bit shorter by just clicking and dragging the transition. Not bad, maybe just a little faster. Here we go. That way it just doesn't start as if it's you know already all on screen. Kind of gives it a randomized type of look as it animates on here. All right, so the next part I'm going to do is animate this thing off. So I'm going to go forward to about two seconds and actually trim this text layer. So we'll just trim the side of it. So that way this thing animates on and then we'll animate off. And for this, what I'm going to do simply is just click on this, hold down option, click and drag to duplicate the same exact adjustment layer. This is a nice shortcut. So always keep that in mind if you are looking to easily duplicate layers inside Premiere Pro. And what we'll do is we'll just basically reset these key stopwatches by clicking on the stopwatch. And we'll start back and we'll basically do the opposite order. So what we'll actually do is start higher with the vertical blocks, maybe 20. And for the path, we'll actually start small. So we'll just move this maybe over here. Go forward a frame. And so on and so forth. So you guys kind of get the idea of how to accomplish this. You basically want to uh, start with a big glitch and with a small glitch when you're going out. All right, that's that. Then we'll go down to our vertical blocks, hit the keyframe, go forward, go down to maybe 16, 12, Yeah, just keep going one frame at a time. If you don't see a glitch thing that you like, you can always change these to a different, you know, value and you will get different results. There we go. And for the color, same thing. If you hold down option, click and drag, you will create a duplicate. For this, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm not gonna change the, the different uh, values. I think you guys get the idea if you rearrange these in any different way, you will get another randomized, you know, different color effect. And same thing, add the iris cross to the end here. Click on the transition and change the end to around 30. That way the end uh, is definitely shorter. You can see more of the transition and we'll make it a little bit shorter. 
There we go. So we got our finished glitch effect. If we unhide the background layer, obviously we have a problem because it's adding all these adjustment layers and stuff to the background clip. So what you can easily do is just marquee select all of these by just clicking and dragging in the sequence, right click and click nest. And then you can name this glitch text, click OK. That way all the adjustment layers are contained within that nested sequence. And you can always double click, go back in here and make adjustments as needed. And if you go into your project panel, you can see the nested sequence. You can even duplicate this nested sequence and change the text within that sequence. And you can have several different, you know, text layers inside your project. So if we go back out here and we drag out this other one, you know, now we've got two different text layers in the same project. So you can easily create, you know, a nice template for yourself by using these techniques. Okay guys, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to take your motion design skills to the next level, I do have some After Effects tutorials where you can create other different text elements such as a neon sign. I'll link that tutorial if you want to watch it up here. Feel free to go watch it. Thanks so much for watching. If this video has helped you, consider subscribing. I post twice a week on a Monday and a Thursday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.